What's going on guys? So today we're gonna to be setting up a brand new incubator. A lot of you guys are probably not gonna really be interested in today's video, uh, but this is just to help out the few people that were asking for a tutorial on how to build one of these incubators. And as you can see, I'm already using the brand new incubator to house some babies that just hatched out and they were just hold in here for a little bit while they absorb their yolk sacs. They're all pretty much done and they'll be going out to their enclosures tomorrow morning. So first thing I wanna do is set up some new eggs that I got and then we're gonna start uh, making the incubator. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. All right, so I just got some more eggs from Luna and look at these, these are so small. These are solcata tortoise eggs. So you can imagine those are gonna be some tiny solcata tortoises. So um, I'm gonna set them up right now in a bin like these and stack it up there. But as you can see, I'm running low on space in this incubator. I can still stack one more there, but I think it's time that we start setting this one up. Now to set up the incubation medium so we can set these eggs up in the incubator. Now to add some water. And mix it. Alright, so that's just how you want it right there. You squeeze it and it stays firm and doesn't break apart like that. And water doesn't come out from the bottom. So this is the perfect amount right there. Alright, so here is the incubator. I turned it on and there's no fan that I'm going to attach because it already comes with a fan right there, as you can see, blowing some air. And here are all the tools. I got the Herbstat. I uh, forgot exactly which one it is, but it's the $100 one and the aluminum tape right here. And the heat tape is right here. And that's the bird screaming over there. So yeah, there's a huge mess right now in this room. I got to clean everything up. But uh, I think this was six feet of heat tape. Let me show you the bird. He's just there. He's just being a little annoying right now. So he needs to stay right there. Okay, so let's start setting this up. <clears throat> so chances are, if you're watching this video, you're trying to build your own incubator. And a lot of people, when I was trying to figure out how to build this, a lot of people were making it super over dramatic, but it's really not that hard. All you need is the heat tape, the thermostat and if you want a fan the fan is optional i've seen people keep them without fans uh, but i want to keep a fan in just for circulation now the only problem that i have with this incubator is the fan is a little loud but it doesn't really matter all right so i am going to use scotch tape just to hold up the heat tape for a second so that i could work on it all right so i think that this was cut uneven I wasn't the one that cut it. I bought it like this already made, um, but this part may have been cut uneven. So when I put it against this, it doesn't come out flush. And as you can see, it gets tighter towards the bottom. So it's wide up here and it gets smaller. It's leaning this way. Uh, not really that big a deal, but it's not gonna be perfect. So it doesn't really matter. Though. Right, so as you can see there i copied pretty much how i had the other incubator set up and it came out okay it wasn't that great um it was a little uh, uneven but it's okay i think it should work perfectly so we'll see how this works this is my first time setting up an incubator and i could remove this though all right so now i gotta drill the hole All right, so I put the hole through here and you see the cable, it's gonna go through here. And right here is where we're gonna put the thermostat. All right, so there we go, the heat tape is in. And as you can see, connected to the thermostat. So how this works is you just plug it in right here. And then the thermostat, uh, this is the power to power up the thermostat, which is 
taped up to the back over there. I'll show you in a minute. But right here, this is the thermometer that takes the temperature uh, that control that this this is what collects the temperature for the thermostat and it's basically the temperature that is right up here so um the thermostat changes uh the settings of the heat tape accordingly to the temperature given here trying to get it to fit 85. the way the thermostat works is it gives it enough power it could either give it uh less or more depending whether it wants to um give it less heat or more heat and this does not cool off it just heats up all right so there we go i've turned this on oh the temperature is already perfectly how i want it so right now inside of this it's 84 degrees and i'm not going to leave the incubator here obviously with all these cables um but i need to go buy a new cable tomorrow so that i could hook it up because you can see the the old incubator I had it right there uh, i'm going to drill a hole through there and run the power through the back to connect both of them on there so i'm going to just let this run overnight and we'll see how it's doing tomorrow all right, so I'm testing the incubator right now. As you can see, it's 84.5 degrees in there and I just opened it up, but wanted to record real quick. So let's see, 84, 84, 84.7, 84.9. So right now it's looking pretty good. I have three thermometers in here. I have this one, the one up there, and then of course the thermostat so it looks good obviously humidity is really low right now because i don't have any type of water in here and right now i don't have the fan on i unplugged it i'm just testing the heat tape to see how that works out so i'm debating whether i'm going to use this without the fan because the fan does heat it up a little bit since it's the one that comes with the fridge so i might not use that fan i might just get another one like this i already have one uh back here somewhere <clears throat> right back there under the thermostat uh, there's another one so i might just use that instead i'm going to be testing this incubator for a few weeks before i put anything in here i still have space for one more clutch up there the thing is i didn't make any holes on these and i'm kind of scared to drill them now with all the eggs inside so I'll, um we'll see if i need more the more space i'll drill some holes in this bin and just put a lid on it and put another one on top and that would be the last and as you can see i have some baby red foot hatching out there's one here and one in this clutch down here, which I moved down because I got the new Sulcata clutch today. And these are the eggs that were infested by the maggots uh, a few weeks ago. And right now, as you can see, I've already hatched a few of them out. I think three of them. Look at that big yolk sac right there. So you're going to put this guy back and let him absorb that. And let me show you the other red foot because this is the smallest red foot I have ever hatched out look at that thing it's so tiny i don't even know why because the egg wasn't that small but look at him he's so small what a cute little baby he still has a little bit of his yolk sack and he has a little extra skew right there but oh my goodness this is the cutest little tortoise i've ever hatched out he is so small maybe the egg was small yeah it was a small egg i just thought it was normal oh speaking of small here's luna's clutch from today and look how small these eggs are they're super tiny so we're gonna see those hatching out in a few months but those eggs are like this big so those are gonna be sulcatas that are gonna be this big when they hatch out that's gonna be crazy and of course the little herman eggs over there those are gonna be even smaller if they hatch out I'm not sure if they're fertile so we'll see all right so there we go the incubator is working perfectly as you can see the temperature there and it's all even let me see let me just see the thermometer so i could check as you can see i'm already using it for some little tortoises as you can see 84 and it's even throughout the whole thing obviously the heat tip's going to be a little bit warmer i'll show you now unless it was off which i think it was because when when it's already a certain temperature in here it doesn't produce any more heat so you can see everything is even in here and that's exactly what i want right now i don't have a fan in there and no lights because i turned off the lights because the only way i could have the lights on is if i have the fan on the top on i didn't unplug the fan and also the wire fell off so it's not completely done but i'm not going to be using it just yet since i still have a little bit more space in here but uh, i'm going to order some led lights like these 
so that I could go around the enclosure, or not the enclosure, the, the incubator so that it looks nicer. And um, I'm probably not gonna use racks. I might put one rack so that I could put water like I have down here for humidity, so it boosts the humidity. And then the last thing I have to do is just add the light and possibly add a fan like this one. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that. It's not completely necessary if you open it up, but it's good for airflow so that it circulates the heat. But as I showed you earlier, it's completely even in there. So it's probably not gonna be needed. I'm gonna decide whether to do that or not in the future. But yeah, that's pretty much how you make an incubator. It's very simple. Some people make it a little too dramatic in their videos that I've been watching at least. Um, if you do decide to add a fan, all you have to do is pretty much the same thing. You hook it up and just like I did for that, you, so you just have to make a hole, run it to, through the back and splice this as well, unless uh, the hole is big enough so that the whole wire goes through. And then uh, some of the fans are USB connected. If not, you're gonna have to splice uh, one of these. You're gonna have to cut one of these and splice it to the other wire and then plug it into the electricity, but some are USB, so. Uh, it depends what you want to do, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it like this The reason why I don't use the built-in fan is because that gets hot and it produces heat So uh, this is controlled, but that wouldn't have been controlled. So if it goes up, it could uh, Overcook the eggs, which I doubt because I left it running for the first few weeks just to see how it worked And it always stayed at a perfect 85, which is exactly what I needed So ideally I wouldn't have needed any of this, but I did this just so that I could control the temperature better so yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you leave a like. If you didn't, leave a future suggestion. Obviously, a lot of people aren't going to be liking this because it's not really a normal video. It's just like a little how-to because some people were asking me how to do it and I was going to do it anyways. So thank you for watching. If you stayed this far, have a great day.